Do you know the name for the chemical formula N-A-B-R-O? Nah, bro. Close enough. That's right. Today we're talking about naming compounds. Hit the theme. Ain't nothing but a chem thing, baby. Too flipped out, teachers going crazy. Lancaster is a district that pays me. Unbreakable, so please don't try to break this. But uh, back to the lecture at hand. Hello and welcome to another episode of Shu Fu Chem and Asha. I'm your host, Shu, and with me as always is Fu. What up, nerds? So Fu, today we're starting a brand new unit. Truer words have never been spoken. So let's get started. Naming compounds, a lesson from the formulas and equations unit. Chemical nomenclature. We've come across a lot of chemical formulas and names in the previous units. Today, we will learn how to name compounds from their chemical formulas using the IUPAC system. IUPAC stands for the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. So this is the organization that puts forth all of the rules that we use in chemistry, including for names and chemical formula writing. Naming ionic compounds. Let's specifically begin with simple binary compounds. A binary compound contains two elements. Step one, identify the compound as ionic. Make sure you look for your metal and non-metal. Step two, find the metal ion on the periodic table and write down its name. You can use table S if needed. Step three, look at the oxidation states. If there is only one listed, continue to step four. Step four, find the non-metal ion and write down its name, use table S if needed again, but change its ending to IDE or ID. So here we have some examples of some elements you might see in some binary compounds. On the left, we have lithium and beryllium. These are two metals. Lithium has one charge of plus one, uh, and beryllium has one charge that happens to be plus two. So that's always the charge for these two elements because it's the only one listed. If you look at chlorine on the right here, we've got multiple oxidation states. Now, for right now, I want you to use that top negative charge for your non-metal. So things like chlorine have a negative one at the top, which means they would gain one electron because they have seven valence electrons right now to get to eight. Binary compounds with Roman numerals. Use the same naming rules as before with the following exception. So in step three, you're gonna look at the oxidation states. If there's more than one listed, you will have to determine which positive charge it is mathematically. You will use a Roman numeral in parentheses after the metal name to specify this positive charge. If we take a look at the metal titanium, we see that it has multiple oxidation numbers, as many transition metals do. It can be plus two, plus three, or plus four. We're gonna have to figure out which one it is, and then in the name, after titanium, we're gonna list a Roman numeral. Many students are a little shaky on the Roman numerals, so please note the Roman numerals that you see in the picture in the lower right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna do a couple of examples here for you. Shu, are you ready? I'm ready. All right, our first compound is NaI. So we've got two elements, it is binary. Uh, what type of elements are those? Well, Na is a metal and I is a non-metal. All right, so when we have a metal and a non-metal, what kind of bonding do we have? Ionic bonding. All right, good. We haven't talked about covalent yet. We will get to those rules later on, but for these examples here, we're strictly talking about ionic rules. Gotcha. All right, so I want you to look up Na on your periodic table. All right, so on the periodic table, I find Na. And, and what's its charge? Okay, so it looks like it's just a plus one that's listed there. All right, so what does it mean when it only has one charge? What does that mean for us for naming? Um, it means that we don't have to specify the charge, so we don't need a Roman numeral, since Good. it has to be plus one. So there's no math involved here. So at this point, we're kind of just writing out the names of this. Okay. okay so Na is what? Na is sodium. Good, and what is I? Well, I is iodine. Good, now what do we remember for our rules for that ending there? Okay, so for the second one, we've got to change the ending to IDE, I. Good, so what's that gonna look so like? So I think it's gonna be iodide. Looks good. Sodium iodide. All right, on our second one here, we have MnO2. So again, we have a metal, not metal. It's ionic. We're gonna look up Mn on our periodic table. All right, so let's see. Mn's kind of in the middle here, and it looks like 
There's a lot of different oxidation numbers it could have. It does. So what are we going to have to do? Well, since we're not really sure about that, maybe we could just go to the oxygen and see what it says for that. Yeah, so we don't know MN's oxidation state because there's multiple ones, but we do know that oxygen always has to have that same charge. So what is oxygen's charge? Um, oxygen looks like it should always be negative too. Good, so now we're gonna do a little bit of math here. Okay. okay. So let's go back and we know that oxygen is negative two. All right. And we also should remember that all of our compounds will always add up to a neutral charge or a charge oh, of zero. Okay. So I gotta show my work adding up to zero down yeah, below. Yeah, so it should look familiar. Yeah. All right, so I've got two oxygens both at negative two, so I should have a total negative four charge. Okay, so this is pretty simple math. What minus four will equal zero? Well, it's definitely gotta be plus four. Good, so the total positive charge has to be positive four. How many MN atoms are there? There's just one. So that one has to be what charge? It's gotta be plus four then. All right, so I think we have all our math done. We're ready to name this properly using Roman numerals. Okay, so we start with the element MN. That's gonna be manganese and because it has more than one oxidation state, we need the Roman numeral. Good. And since it's plus four specifically, I'm gonna need a Roman numeral four. Good. Right, and that is the IV, right? That's four. Perfect, yep, okay. IV is four. And so for oxygen, I don't really worry about its charge for the name, I just gotta change the ending again, right? That's right. So I'm gonna make it oxide. Perfect. Manganese four oxide. You try number one. Name these two compounds. Make sure you look up the charges of the metals on your periodic table. Compounds containing polyatomic ions. These compounds are not binary since they contain more than two elements. Use the same naming rules as before with the following exception. Step four, find the polyatomic ion and write down its name using table E. Notice that they are already named for you. You don't have to change the ending. Most polyatomic ions end in H or it, not ide. Okay, we have some more examples. Are you ready, Fu? I am. All right, let's get started here. Example one, we're going to name NH42CO3. All right, kind of a crazy looking formula. What are you thinking? A lot of elements here. So it's definitely not binary because there's more than two. So it's definitely looking like we definitely have like a polyatomic ion or something, maybe even two. Yeah, so let's go to table E and check that out. Let's All see if right. we can notice any of these on table E. So here's table E. Um, it looks like that NH4, oh, that's right there. Okay, good. What's and, that called? Nope, oh, that's ammonium. Ammonium, good. Okay. And then SO3, right? CO3. CO3. CO3, right there. And what's that called? That's carbonate. All right, we're ready to name, actually. Okay. Let's go back. We have two polyatomic ions in this one. All right, so. The so first part, the positive ion, was called what again? That was ammonium. Ammonium. Now, do we need a Roman numeral or anything? Um, it only has one charge, so only no. One, only one charge on table E, so no, we're good with ammonium. All right, and then what was that second polyatomic ion called? Um, that was CO3 carbonate. Carbonate. Do we need to change the ending? Uh, well, no, the polyatomic it said was the endings were already there, right? Eights or ites? Exactly, good, they're already given. So Carbon. that's what's nice about table. It kind of gives you everything Eight. you need to. Ammonium carbonate is the final answer. Good, all, all right. right. Good, let's look at two. This time we have Fe2SO33, a lot of subscripts going on. This time it looks like we do have a metal. So let's go to our periodic table and check it out. All right, so Fe is iron. It's right there. What do you notice in terms of oxidation well, states? Well, remember this middle part here, the uh, transition metals? We've got multiple oxidation states here, so I guess we're using Roman numerals. We are, it could be plus two or plus three for its oxidation state. All right, All right so we're gonna we're... be doing some math work here, right? Okay, I can write iron. Right? You can write iron, sounds good. You can put the parentheses there too, so that we Ooh. remember that we're going to be adding a Roman numeral. Good idea. Now, as we've done in previous examples, we want to mathematically figure out what the charge of iron is, but this time we're looking at SO3. So what do you notice about SO3? Multiple atoms, that's a polyatomic ion, so table E. Good, so we're gonna go to table E to find the charge, not the periodic table. All right, well I see SO3 and SO4. Does it matter which one I use? 
Well, it does because it specifically has SO3. We want to make sure that we're naming okay. that particular polytonic gotcha. They are different. So SO3 is sulfite. Sulfite, good. As okay. opposed to SO4 minus two, which is sulfate. We don't want to write the wrong ending because it would be incorrect. Gotcha, and sulfite is on minus two? Yes. Okay. All right, so we're going to use that for our math. All right. I want you to circle the SO3 within the parentheses. Okay, that whole thing now has a charge of negative two. Okay. Good. Now, what we can do is know that there's a three outside the parentheses. There's three sulfite ions. So oh. what would our total negative charge be for three sulfide ions at negative two? That would be negative six. Good. What do we need everything to add up to in terms of our, ch our charges? Always adding up to zero. Good. So what's our total charge on the iron? Well, plus six minus six is zero, so it's gotta be a positive six total. But be careful, because it's not actually plus six for the individual oxidation state. There's uh, two irons, right? There's two of them there, all right. So then that means six divided by two is plus three. Good, right? and you can check at the end that plus three times two would give me a total charge of plus six. So what am I writing? That's Roman numeral three or Roman numeral six? Good question. We want the individual oxidation state of iron, so we're gonna go with Roman numeral three to specify the plus three oxidation gotcha. state. Gotcha, so it's always the number on top of the number, the oxidation state. Good, so one, two, three, Roman numeral Good. three. And what, what did we call that polyatomic ion again? Um, that was sulfite. Sulfite, good. So we have iron three sulfite as our final answer. You try number two. Please name the following two examples. Make sure you take a look at table E and oxidation states on your periodic table. Naming molecular compounds. Remember, molecular means covalent. Step one, identify the compound as molecular, non-metals only. Step two, find the first non-metal on the periodic table and write down its name. Add the appropriate prefix, shown below, to indicate the number of atoms shown by the subscript in the chemical formula. Step three, find the second non-metal on the periodic table and write down its name, but change its ending to ide, I-D-E. Add the appropriate prefix as shown below. The prefixes for the numbers one through 10 are as follows. Mono, di, tri, tetra, penta, hexa, hepta, octa, nana, and deca. Note! You will never need to look up any charges since there are no Roman numerals in this naming style. Note! The prefix mono is never used with the first element. Note! When the prefix ends in A or O, and the name of the second element begins with a vowel, like oxide, the A or O is dropped from the original prefix. Note! Molecular compounds containing hydrogen are named the same way as ionic compounds. For example, H2S is hydrogen sulfide, not dihydrogen monosulfide. Okay, we have some more examples. You ready, Fu? I am. All right, let's look at our first example. We have NF3. What two types of elements do we have here? We have nitrogen and fluorine. Those are both non-metals. All right, so if I have two non-metals, what type of bonding are we talking about? Two non-metals, we've got covalent. Good, so if we have covalent bonding, we're gonna use the molecular system of naming. That's the one with the prefixes. We're not gonna have to worry about charges or Roman numerals at all. It's kind of nice. All right, so let's start with that first element there. Uh, it's nitrogen. Nitrogen, how many do we have? I have just one. Right, now if it's the first element listed, we actually don't need the prefix mono to specify one, so we're just gonna write nitrogen. All right, that's easy. All right, so our second element is? Uh, fluorine. And how many of those do we have? There's three. All right, so what's our prefix for three? Uh, tri. Tri. T-R-I. Good. And fluorine, again, as you mentioned, is our second element. So we just have to change the ending a little bit to make this correct. Okay. Good. So we change nitrogen the e to I. So Nitrogen trifluoride. All right. Looking good. See how easy that is? Yeah, no charges. Exactly. Nice. Let's look at our second example. We have N2O4. All right, well, we'll have you kind of jump right in here. All right, so again, these are both non-metals, so it's covalent bonding. We use the molecular rules here. Um, so I see I have two nitrogens, so prefix for two is di. Good. So 
dinitrogen. Yep, so we would need a prefix here on the first element because it's not representing just one. Okay, and now I have oxygen and I've got four of them. Go so ahead. the prefix for four is tetra. Tetra. And oxygen becomes oxide. So dinitrogen tetra oxide. You're following the naming rules exactly correctly. There's just one little nuance we want to add, and that is when you see those two vowels come together, the A at the end of tetra and the O at the beginning of oxide, we're actually going to drop the A. Oh, okay. And it kind of blends together more smoothly now. We say tetroxide. So dinitrogen tetroxide instead of dinitrogen tetraoxide. Dinitrogen tetroxide. Got it. You try number three. Please name the following examples using the molecular style of naming. Well, that's going to do it for today's episode on naming compounds. Later, nerds! Today's episode is brought to you by Kellogg's Dingleberry Cereal. Made with the chocolatey taste of Hershey's Cocoa. They're crap! But we never are, for we zone to the break of dawn. S-E-I-E-N-C-E -E -E in the hall, they call S-Wing. You know we never wear a tie like my homies, boys, two men. It's so hard to say goodbye. Like this, that, and this, and uh. It's like that, and like this, and like that, and uh. It's like this. You're going in low power mode. Plug and chill to the next episode.